I would... If you're here, hi, my name is Miss Megan Robinson, and I'm very excited to do this video today because you've asked about it for so very long, but it is going to be about my favorite brushes. It was really hard to narrow it down because I have very specific brushes for a specific product. So I pulled the brushes that I use every single day without fail. Um, top of mind if I was traveling with them. These are the ones that I have to have. Make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. Let me know what your favorite brushes are. And if you'd like to see what mine are and how I like to use them, please keep on watching. They're obviously dirty, but we're gonna start off strong with foundation. This is the BK Beauty 109. Um, I like a large, more dense brush for foundation. This one's a little bit more flexible. This is the Melt 708 Flat Buffer. These could sometimes be deemed as like a body brush or like a kabuki style brush. This one's a little bit more dense, um, but this is my favorite thing just to get the product down. In my older videos, I used to use the e.l.f. brushes that look really similar to this, except they just started to fall apart on me more. So I have these and I love these. I always put foundation on the back of my hand, scoop it, and then go in. This one you can do a little bit more of a pressing motion and a pulling motion, where with this one I feel it's best to just push the product into the skin. There is like a little bit of movement when it's cleaner. When you get into a more dirtier brush, like this one is dirty and I need to, I need to wash it. And this is generally why I'll have multiples of things. Just for reference, this is the e.l.f. one. I actually do still really like it. It's just that two of mine started to not perform how I wanted them to, but I would still put that in my favorite, favorite brushes because I still really love it. Next is concealer. This is another BK Beauty brush. It's the same shape as the foundation brush. This is the 109. I love this. I'm not a sponge person in makeup. It's the best of like if a sponge and a brush had a baby, kind of giving this vibe. It's just the angle of it fits so well. Um, it controls the product really well. I love the finish it gives. I love this. Before I had this one, this was also BK Beauty. I had this tiny guy here, which is like a smaller version of that, which is really good for inside here. It could depend on the amount of coverage you want, how you want things to shear out. And then this one is also BK Beauty. This one's newer. If I'm doing like a really quick under eye, like a day off, not really layering as much, I really love this shape and I'm trying to keep to the ones I grab, but I have so much to share. It reminds me of these Mac brushes. This you can still get the 287, the 286, the 287 you can't get anymore. Any of that duo fiber style brush where there's shorter hairs, longer hairs, um, before they used to be synthetic and natural, they are just the best for blending. So though like for years, this was the only thing I would use for concealer. Um, obviously, I like to work with bigger brushes now compared to then. So that's why I like these. This brush here falls into two different categories, cream contour and concealer under the eye. So again, the way that I can do nose contour or fill in my contour here, it's perfect. The edges allow me to get into this area for under eye and like tap out concealer, it's perfect. It pulls, like if you wanna clean up down here, it's perfect. It's densely packed, it's on an angle. Just really, really love this one. How close does that let you get? I always make sure that I have this brush on me when I travel. Speaking of cream contour, this is another one I really love. This is from Melt. If you remember, I don't know if I have any anymore. The 130 brush from MAC was like the foundation brush forever. It's a little bit too small for what I like now, but for cream contour, and again, if you've noticed a theme, I like things that are on a slant. I'm realizing this as I'm speaking. This is the 777 face brush. So I like this to push in cream bronzer, cream contour specifically. The 170 from MAC, for me, it's cream blush, but it's a beautiful foundation brush. It's also a beautiful concealer brush. It's a little bit more dome shaped. It's a little softer. If you're terrible at makeup, and like don't know how to apply foundation, this will do everything for you. I love the 170, but for me, I'm picking it up generally. I'm pushing cream blush into the skin with this type of motion. That's what I like this one for. One of these will always be with me. That covers my like cream liquid products. Onto powder products, I will not go anywhere without this brush. This is the 187. 
Um, mine is an original, so it's synthetic and natural hair. And this is my bronzer brush. I love this brush. I love it when it's dirty. I love when my brushes are dirty. I, I just let it, the surface of my skin. And you could use this, like if you had like a tinted moisturizer that you just need to buff really quickly on the skin, this is really good for that too. But for bronzer, love of my life. This brush is newer to me. This is the F44 brush from Sigma. This is what I specifically use for Global Glow as my like bronzer topper because I love the shape of it. This is the 143 from MAC, which does similar. Sometimes I'll use this for bron like bronze tour. I love, I love a fat brush. Like I love thickness. So this is a little bit too densely packed for Global Glow where this still has a little bit of flexibility to it. Um, so it dusts a really nice amount of product on it. So I love those. This is a brush I've had since 2010. This is a cover effects brush. You probably can't get it anymore. This is the MAC 128. That densely packed brush that's still kind of domey shaped. I love this. I like it with a very specific fluid formula. Face and body's too thin. Almost if it was like a gel a jelly liquid kind of formula to buff that into the skin, a thinner studio tech. Like I'm very specific about why I like each brush. And obviously brushes are an investment. They're something that you're going to buy once and have for a really long time if you're getting a higher quality product. My oldest Mac brush, it only broke last year and I had it since 2008 or 2009, 16 years. So my Mac brush that finally broke on me was 16 years old. So they are something you want to spend your time figuring out how you like to apply your makeup, how you want the finish to be, how you utilize products. Because for example, somebody that likes to use a pushing motion like this with a liquid foundation and this brush is not going to work. This is for somebody that wants more of a, that uses more of like a circular motion. So all of these things matter, which is why you have to look at your own technique and spend more time perfecting your routines, which is just watching and teaching yourself. I did this, I like this. I did this, I hate this. And figuring out how you wanna tweak it in order to figure out what brushes work for you. The most underrated blush brush in history because it's a little bit challenging to work with. These are best when they're dirty. And if you like to layer your makeup, guilty, um, you wiggle the product into the blush and then you sweep on a really thin veil. I find for me at that stage, I'm not getting patchiness, it's not clinging to anything where the denser your brush is, the more impact it's going to have when it goes onto the skin. Also, actually, while I'm here, we need to talk about something. When you are loading your brush for blush, at that moment, this moment right here, you have the most product on your brush. If you start here, that's where it's gonna grab and you're gonna have the most pigment and they're gonna be forced to buff it out, which is why you should start towards the back and basically sweep it forward. So you can see that just tinted it a little bit pink. It's not like in, it's not intense. Obviously there's ways to make it intense, but it's a common thing that I've seen and then people have to spend I really don't want that color on today, but it's fine. You have to work double time to like blend that in where if you start at the back and brought it forward, it would have been a lot softer. Challenging to work with takes time, but it just looks so good. Another angled brush. Um, I like this right now for the skin enhancer from Makeup by Mario for sweeping on really, really light veils of like a cream product. I enjoy this. Or if I'm buffing in a contour, cream contour that's a little bit darker, the tininess of this is great. This is the BK Beauty 112. This brush is everything to me. So there's brushes that I use when I work on other people and there's brushes that I use on myself. This brush on me is what I like to put my loose powder on with, where on someone else I like to do their foundation with it. So that's why everything serves a different purpose. It's all really personal. But the 109 
is the brush. Like if you take any foundation, whether it's really, really thin, really, really thick, you can make it look more airbrushed. You can make something really thick, have like a tinted moisturizer look to it because it just buffs it in so nicely. These are originals, these are natural hair, and these are the newer synthetic ones. I love this brush, but specifically on me, I use this for loose powder. As soon as I put loose powder on, I dust it away. So this is a melt, this is the 713 contour fan. You can use this for a lot of different reasons because you could also buff in like a powdered contour, um, but I use it to take away loose powder because again it's a little bit on the thicker side it's not super super thin like a lot of fan brushes are i eat this brush up the 240 is like a giant 224 you can use this for eyeshadow you can use this for under eye you can use this for highlight this is such a beautiful brush it's so aesthetically pleasing to me i love this brush this is the 240s i think it's amazing i specifically use it for concentrating powder under the eye. That's why mine looks like this because it's mixing with powder and concealer. So it's making like a, a like a cake, right? Um, because it's wet and dry product, um, but it doesn't get in the way of me working with it. You could press loose powder into targeted areas. It's just so good. A wash of soba on the eyelid. I love it. 240S. 224. I think I have only owned three in my lifetime, like I said, my one of 16 years <laughs> broke on me. Um, it's separated from the ferrule and then the top bits, because these are both um, natural hair ones, the top hairs, they started to get a little bit blunt. So it was a little bit scratchy on my eye. This is my favorite eyeshadow brush because I love big, blown out, fluffy, smoky eyes. So this is how I will always apply my crease colors. This is how I will blend stuff out. This might be my favorite eye brush of all time. It's another reason why I loved the 286 so much because it was like synthetic hairs added to a little bit less of the natural hair. So that's why I was so great for buffing and concealer because you were getting the best of both worlds. But this is also a really great concealer brush if you like to use this kind of motion. If you're somebody that likes really sheer coverage and you just need stuff to blend quickly. 224, I love, I love you. The 221 is the most beautiful. I like it more than the 217. There is something so sexy about the fluffiness and the tininess of this. It's so cute. On my eye, so like the equivalent of a 224 on somebody with a really small eye is the 221. Um, but for me, because my eyes are bigger, this is where I get to go in with like a little bit more of my detail work and like buff out lower lash lines. I love this brush. I love this brush. I will not do an eye look without these two brushes. This is how all of my eyes start. And then I sort of just jump into like smaller detailing brushes. I have many of these. Um, the 219 pencil brush. This is what I'll sometimes like buff out um, pencil liner with. This is what I could do the lower lash line with to buff in here. I like that it's big enough to be smoky, but still small enough to add a little bit of detail. 219 is a staple for me for sure. When it comes to eyeliner, liquid liner, or using like something fluid to create a liner look, the 209. I love the 209, it is a sexy brush to me. It just has the perfect amount of like flexibility. Like the 210 is a little bit too flimsy for my liking. Um, I prefer something with like slightly more control just with how my, my hand works. And the 209 is that for me. I also tend to wear a thicker line than a thinner line but I need to also have the 210 on hand. But if I'm picking one, 209, always. This is one of three, like I have a lot of brushes. The 212 is one of the most stunning brushes. Um, so when I use this on other people, it's generally to clean up a lip or it's to fill in brow powder. On me, I use it for stamping liner, doing the waterline with like a cream color and this is actually how I learned to use liquid eyeliner. I was given this, a 212 was one of my first brushes. I was taught to use it, um, boot black liner with a brush to be able to perfect it. This is a stunning brush. You wanna carve out an eyebrow, you wanna clean up a line, you wanna clean up in here. This is a beautiful brush. I have some brushes you can't get. 
and then I have one that you can. Um, this is newer to me, but I really love it. This is the round detail mini brush from Melt. If you remember the 214 from MAC, this one was a little bit more dense, but a really great brush. Um, this one here is a lot softer, which I really just enjoy. As soon as I put it down, I was like, ooh, I like that. So if you are a fan of the 214, this is like a very small, soft version of it. I really like that. This might be one of the greatest brushes I've ever used of all time. <laughs> this is the 218. This was a special edition brush. I think it was the, it was with the Kabuki collection. And it's like a smaller tapered pencil brush. I use this to buff out my pencil liner that's really, really creamy. And I just live for this. I got this one from Morphe because I wanted more of them. It's a little bit more dense. So it can get the job done, but it just doesn't still hit in the same way. These next two brushes break my heart. One, pretty sure was limited edition. Was it? And then two got discontinued. But anyways, the 222. So a more tapered, straight version of the 224. I bought mine with the, I think it was like red blonde brunette collection or something like that. And this was kind of what I use the 221 for now, but that's what I used for back then. And then one time I wet my brush because it was natural hair. I was like, oh, I can just like dry it with a straightener because it hasn't dried fully. So I took my straightener to it and it went like this. So I like trimmed the edges. I still have it somewhere. I just don't know exactly where it is. Justice for the 228. This little guy, this cute little paddle brush, so, so tiny. Um, this is what I would put carbon on with. I don't use black eyeshadow often, but when I do, it's with, it's with this brush. <laughs> this is the 221 that exploded. And I tried trimming these and it just didn't work. If you want to become like a collector of brushes, just you're looking for what your technique is, what the formula is that you're working with, how you want it to look. Are you going to have brushes for specific products or do you want a brush to do multiple things? Um, those are the kind of questions you have to ask yourself when it comes to buying a new brush. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about some of my favorite brushes. Make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. Let me know what your favorite brushes are, whether they were discontinued or ones that you can currently get. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram under the same name at Miss Megan Robinson. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>